Good morning, everybody. This is Rick. This is our 2005 Toyota 4Runner SR5 with the V6. And I have been having trouble with the gas gauge on it for a few years now. We bought this vehicle brand new in 05. We've owned it ever since. Um, have not had many troubles with it. But a couple of years ago, the gas gauge started not reading correctly. And um, I've been troubleshooting it, figuring out what's wrong with it. And today I think is the day we're gonna finally get it fixed. The problem, well, before I do that, I wanna tell you just a little bit about me. I am 60 years old. This is September, 2018. And God just blessed me with excellent troubleshooting skills, electrical skills, and mechanical skills. All my life I've been able to fix just about anything that needs to be fixed on our cars, our family's cars, our house, small appliances, furnaces, um, hobbies, pinball machines, that kind of stuff. I'm just blessed that those are my gifts. So I've done that. Um, the other part of this is we keep vehicles a long time. That is 13 years old. Behind here is a 99 Camry. That's 18 years old. I have had a 68 Firebird for 40 years, and the newest car in our stable is an 09 Challenger, and that rolls 10 years old in a couple months. So we tend to keep vehicles a long time. So that's a few extra maintenance things for me. <clears throat> Open up the trunk for a little bit of light. The problem I'm seeing with the fuel gauge is it no longer is taking full amount of fuel as it should when I go to fill this thing up at the gas tank, at the gas station. We have a grocery store that offers a fuel rewards program and you can get up to 20 gallons of gas at a discount price with this program. We've used that for years. We run this until it's down a little lower near the E, not, you know, not run out of gas low, but lower near the E and go to the gas station, put 20 gallons of gas in it. And we've been doing that for years. A couple of years ago, it got to the point where I'm doing the same thing, going to the same gas stations. And now I can only get in 19 gallons. Then I can only get in 18 gallons. Then I can only get in 17 gallons. And it got to the point recently to where, and every time in between that, I fill this thing and we run it pretty low. We run it back down to the same spot on the E. Recently I went in, this thing's on empty on E again, and I can only get 15 gallons in. So that has been the major issue with this gauge reading correctly. The other issue that has appeared is the gauge can get very erratic. Um, I've learned to watch the gauge and what's going on in the mileage. And we park the car and it reads somewhere between a quarter tank and uh, three eighths and that sounds right and then I get in later on that day or the next day and that gas gauge is slammed way below E even lower than it is right now and the fuel low light is on and I know that's not the case because I just parked it last night and I had a quarter tank or th you know anywhere from a quarter to three eighths but now it's slammed way past E and the light is on I turn the key back off turn it back on and uh, then the gauge pops right back up to where it should have been up in that quarter range. So I know there's another issue going on here. That has happened a few times to me. Every time I've ever gone and filled the gas tank, it would go from wherever it was on the low all the way up to read actually full. So the full part has always worked well until last week when I filled it up and it only went to three quarter. And then as I'm driving home, it slowly went up to the full mark. So I know I've got an issue. I want to get it fixed. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize straight up. I am a details guy. I research things, I troubleshoot things. So I am going to tell you every single thing I have seen and every single thing I have done just in case something I say relates to what you're seeing and what you're experiencing. And even if you're not having the exact same issues, hopefully something I say will help you troubleshoot what's going on with yours. 
Um, along the way, I've started taking measurements. Um, what I've done is I have tapped into the fuel sender line. Back here, underneath your carpet, you take the back seat out. There is an access cover. And on some, people are saying that on some forerunners you can access the fuel sending unit through this hole. No way that's going to happen on this 2005. There is the whole assembly for the, that's the top of the fuel tank, the sending unit, the fuel pump, that whole white cap has to come off to replace it. What I've done along the way is I've tapped into the two wires. There's only four wires on the connector that goes down into the gas tank. Two wires are running the fuel pump. Two wires are running the fuel sender. The fuel pump takes a lot more current than the fuel sending unit. So there are two larger wires. They run the fuel pump. And there are two smaller wires. Those are the wires for the sending unit. I've tapped into the wires for the sending unit. I know what wires they are out of my Chilton's manual. And I can tell you that they are, oh, I had it here. There they are. On this car, one wire is brown with a red stripe, the other is black with a yellow stripe. So again, along the way for the past few months, I've tapped into those. I ran that wire up through my armrest and I have been reading voltage measurements through that. All right, but for before I explain that, I want to go back here and show you where we are right now. Along the way also, I have been writing down where we are with the mileage. All right, I set my AAA odometer, and every time we fill this thing, I know when I fill this thing, my distance remaining display always goes to 397 to 411, somewhere in that range. I know this thing gets 19 to 20 miles a gallon. I've had it since new. We've had it a lot of years. Right now, my fuel gauge is saying I'm almost out of gas, but I have only physically gone 280 miles. I know this thing will go 400 miles. I've done it over and over again. So right now, it's saying I'm a lot lower than I am. I have 120 miles to go at least before I run out of gas. And 120 miles divided by 20 miles a gallon, I have at least six gallons of gas in the tank, more than that gauge is showing. And I know every gas tank has a reserve capacity of a gallon or two, so even when it's on E, you're really not in danger of immediately running out of gas. So, again, I think I have two problems with this gauge reading. Um, that is one of them, that it is always reading less than is in the tank, anywhere between once it is full and too empty. The other problem we have experienced in the last, sorry, <laughs> the other experience, problem we've experienced in the last six to nine months is, I, I've learned to watch the gas gauge, I park the car, I know it's at a quarter tank, anywhere between a quarter tank and three eighths of a tank, this can happen. I'm at about, let's say, a quarter tank, park the car, get in it later on in the day or the next day, turn the key on, and the gauge is slammed way below E and the warning light is on. I know that can't be the case because I know I have a quarter tank of gas in it. I turn the key off, turn the key on, and it jumps right back up to where it was. Quarter tank, three-eighths of a tank. That's happened quite a few times now recently. And sometimes it'll jump right back up as soon as I have turned the key back on. Sometimes it won't do it for three, four key turns. Sometimes it won't do it till an hour later. But it does eventually pop back up to the amount of gas that I physically have in the tank. Every time I have filled a gas tank on this thing, it has always gone all the way up to full. Um, there's been one time in the last week where I filled this thing up and it only jumped to three quarters of a gauge. And then as, as I was driving it home, it slowly went all the way up to full. So I have a problem with something in what's reporting, how much gas is in the tank. And um, I'm going to see if we can figure that out today. Going back to here, as I said, I tapped into those two wires and I read voltage measurements 
for a long time everywhere along the way for gas gauges well how much gas is in the tank what does the odometer say what am i getting at um i got it to do that issue once where it slammed all the way to e i got my readings but even with that something just wasn't setting right with me so i decided to start taking readings of the actual resistance of the fuel sending unit the fuel sender is simply a float with a resistance swing built into it and there's your two wires that connect to that connector that connect to the underside of that electrical plug there um, what I wanted to do is check the measure the resistance of that sending unit as it swings so I started marking my dates and times apologize for my chicken scratch mileage odometer readings all that physically pull the connector off get down inside on the fuel tank not the wires but the fuel tank and reading resistance and as i go from a quarter of a tank i had 82 ohms as i kept going lower and lower and lower that resistance reading got higher and higher and higher till i physically ran it out of gas um, yes, only time in my life I've ever run a vehicle out of gas. What I wanted to do, though, was as long as I was troubleshooting this, I wanted to get the full range of the sending unit. And also, I wanted to find out just how many gallons this thing holds. So I put 4.0 gallons in a gas tank, in a gas can, put that in the back, ran this up and down a piece of road nearby where I knew I had plenty of exits off the road for when I did run out of gas. And again, I took my readings all the way down from my physical mileage, how far I've gone on the odometer. And after I had physically traveled 428 miles since I last filled up this gas tank, this thing ran out of gas. I took all my resistance measurements off of the sending unit directly and drove half a mile to the gas station and filled it up. It then took 19.0 gallons. So the 19.0 plus the 4.0 that I had just put in it, um, this thing does take when full 23 gallons of gas. So call it a 24 gallon gas tank. So again, I know I can go long shot 420 miles and my odometer at 280 is telling me I'm out of gas. I'm thinking the problem is in the sending unit. Um, the way the sending unit works is this is the resistance reading. Here's the electrical part. This is a float, um, and that's exactly what it is and why it's called a float. It's a sealed piece of plastic. It floats on top of the gasoline. And as the gasoline A level in the tank changes that float will raise or lower and swing that arm um, I've already measured this I know that brand new sending unit is <clears throat> swings from 4.2 to 110 ohms um, this is a sending unit from Toyota that's the part number for my 2005 Toyota 4Runner when it comes to buying and replacement parts this is simply my opinion. Um, I've done this for a long, a long time, repaired a lot of things. I have learned over time, if it's any type of sensor, if it's anything that talks to a computer, I buy original equipment brand parts. I have had trouble using aftermarket parts. Um, they just don't always seem to work for me and if I'm troubleshooting an issue a lot of times it can be more than one thing and if I buy the thing that I think it is and I can't trust that that part is now definitely good I could be chasing my tail for a long time only to come back to find out that the replacement part that I put in is also not reading correctly that's happened to me so whether it's on my Toyota, I'll buy Toyota parts. If it's on my Dodge, I'll buy Dodge parts. We've had a lot of Honda Accords. I bought Honda, uh, Honda parts. Um, I've just learned to do that. You can shop for price. You can find Toyota parts online at a much cheaper rate than the dealers. 
um, suggested retail. You can buy them from there. Most of the dealers these days do sell online. There's also warehouses for um, GM parts, for actual GM parts for the General Motors cars, because I've had those in the past. But just my experience, I stick with a physical OEM brand from the manufacturer part. Um, I am going to, today, replace this fuel sending unit according with the instructions in my Chilton's manual. Um, we'll disconnect all of this. I'm going to put this up on jack stands because there's a big assembly under there and there's a protective cover protecting the gas tank that I'm pretty sure is going to have to be up in the air um, to get it out from under the car. And I'll get this out, get the old um, sending unit out, and we'll see what happens next and I will let you know how it goes. Alright, so the tank is out and you can see the quick disconnect lines over there. There's the actual fuel filler line. This is a vent that has a quick connect on it. And the only thing the Chilton's manual didn't tell me about is there is another hose that goes to the um, back up towards the back end area. I'm assuming it's part of emission, some kind of breather vent. So that was a bit of a bugger to get off, but that one is off. Um, there's the tank. I don't know if you can see, there is baffling inside the tank. Um, I've cleaned all the crud off the outside, which was the top of the unit as I can so I don't get that back in. I've cleaned off my O-ring. I'll clean up all these rocks. But here is the original sending unit. Um, I do see, I can't call them burn marks, wear marks, scorch marks, but unfortunately that would be in the area when the fuel gauge is up, all the way up. When it's all the way down position, I don't necessarily see any burn marks, scorch marks. And I was hoping to find that the float was physically full of fuel, making it heavier, making it sink more, but I don't feel that easy. It feels either. It feels as light as the other one. Um, I will swap out this sending unit, put it all back together. I'm going to siphon the rest of the gas back out to make it easier to put it up. And then I am going to put it back together and we'll go more from there. All right, just a couple other notes before I put this back together. I pulled that retaining ring off with a strap wrench that I have. It works very well, nice and flexible. It comes around. The book tells you about these locking tabs that mesh on these points on here. You just push them in as you're rotating. Um, I have checked the inside of this electrical connection. It looks clean and good. The new sending unit is in. It simply push that lock tab in. It slides in a keyhole slot um, to pull it out. I can hear the wiper as it wipes across the variable resistor now that I could not hear necessarily with the old one. Um, we'll see if that's something. And of course, I am going to go measure that carefully with my own meter um, later on. Something I do want to mention, anytime I get into a project this deep, where all this has to be done to get the unit out. There's your protective cover. That's why you need to jack up the vehicle. Normally, if I'm this far into a part, I am going to replace everything inside that module so I don't have to come back here in a year and do it again. So normally, I would always replace the fuel pump. Again, on a fuel pump, I'm just stubborn. I'm going to use the OEM pump. And in this case, that fuel pump, not this whole cartridge assembly, but just the fuel pump that's inside that basket, is $281. Um, I have not found any failure notes anywhere on Toyota fuel pumps. I've talked to my uh, people at my Toyota dealership who I have a good relationship with. There's no known problem with Toyota fuel pumps. Um, so I decided at this point, I'm not changing it out. I know now it's not that big of a job to get this thing in and out. Um, and if I had to, I'll pull it out again to change the fuel pump. But normally I would change it out. At this point, I am not going to do that. I've cleaned up. Whoops. I siphoned out all the gasoline in here. I did get, did get six gallons, seven gallons, seven gallons of gas out of this with where the gauge was showing in the past. Um, after I get it all back in, I'm going to put 
all that gas back in and we'll see where the new gauge reads. I have taken out this O-ring, cleaned the rim, cleaned it. Uh, once I get this all snapped back in place, I'm gonna clean the whole top of this up and start putting it back in. I'm sorry for the little additions, but that's how I do things. Again, normally when I open something like this, I would replace any O-rings that I'm getting to. Um, but the O-ring that sits right under here, the seals at, that cannot be bought separately, at least not by Toyota. You have to buy the entire cage assembly, which is ridiculous in price. Um, it was in very good shape, such as the O-rings inside the fuel connector line, so I didn't think I needed to on this one. Um, to take this thing out, now that it's out, the first thing you're going to do is jack it up because you need to get the metal protective pan off. You can see where the bolts are on the protective pan. Simply unscrew those, that drops straight down. It's got some weight to it, but it's not too bad. Then to get the fuel tank itself out, the clips on these, you simply rotate that little tab and pull the hoses apart and they come right out. This is a, an old fashioned uh, water hose clamp. That is your fuel filler neck. This is your vent with another one of those little tabs that you simply um, push it back and out of the way. And then this one was a son of a gun. I just had to get in behind it with a screwdriver. You'll see there's two little plastic tabs holding it on this retaining ring. I just pushed on those plastic tabs till I could break those free and put them back on. I didn't break anything. Um, that went very well. My book said I needed to pull these off before I dropped it out through the back seat. I didn't have to do that because they're attached to the tank. You can see that I've cleaned up all the rocks in here. And naturally you have to remove the back seat to get to that access panel to get that electrical connector off. And then here you can see the tank actually mounts up with two straps. There's one of the straps, there's the other one. Um, on the back side are pins that have cotter pins holding them in place, but you can't get that one pin on this side out because this right here is in your way. So undo the bolts. If you're gonna have gas in it, this has got some weight to it. So I had a jack under it with a board to support it. Simply dropped it right back down. Check the routing of all your connectors. Um, and that wasn't bad for me taking my time it took me two and a half hours to get this completely out. All right, everything is done back in, back vehicles back on the ground. I did end up pulling out roughly six gallons of gas. Once I got almost all of it siphoned out of the gas tank, I plugged my fuel pump relay back in and I've already turned it on and started the car. I had the gauge on without the engine running before I added any gas and it started of course way down below E. And as I added gas, it came up slowly, and then just above E, it kind of looked like it staggered for a bit. It just stayed in place, and then it popped up to an eighth of a tank, and then from the rest of the way up, it went nice and smooth. But remember before, with this exact much gas in the vehicle, it was sitting on the E mark with the light on. I put back exactly the same amount of gas, and now my gauge is reading just under a quarter. So that's a whole lot more realistic as to what's in the tank right now. Again, it's not on the E. Um, looks really good that this might have fixed the problem. Um, from here, I'm gonna go fill it up and run it through a couple tanks of gas, and we will find out. All right, so went and got gas, came back home, set the tripodometer, that was five miles. The gas gauge actually went to full before I was done filling the gas. The pump shut off a little while after that. Um, but I kind of remember that being kind of normal to where it might be on the high side. The thing that now bothers me is the range only went to 331 miles when I filled it. That always has gone up to 394 to 411. So I'm going to give it a full tank of gas, run it down low, see how many miles I actually can go, and 
see how this turns out. All right, testing the old sender is going to prove to be useless because you, no matter how much I move it, how gentle I move it, and right now the meter is on 1,000 ohms, K ohms there, it just jumped to mega ohms. <clears throat> and as I just slightly move the float, it is erratic and all over the place. So I am assuming that this being wet reads a lot more reliably because I'm still in a K ohms and I know that's not the case because the brand new one read from 4.2 ohms to 110 full swing and I know my old one ran roughly in that range because I had tested it all the time. It was still, I tested this one all the time. It was still in a fuel tank. But I guess my point to you is you can see the, I'm gonna call them burn marks, but I really don't know that they're burn marks call it pitting, call it oxidation. You can see the wiper arm sleeves are rather shiny, but the wiper arm contact itself has, you know, it's been in gasoline for 13 years. It's all corroded up. The connector ends aren't fantastic, but um, they themselves also are a little corroded. So um, I'm rather confident this is going to be my fix, but I was hoping to test this just to double verify it, but I know it's the problem, being out of gas is not helping it. All right, everybody, we have gone through one full tank of gas. The gas gauge came down nice and smoothly, like it should. Nothing erratic, no major jumps. Um, you can see right now where the gas gauge is, just above E. This is about the time we normally would come and get gas when I was trying to get the 20 gallons in the tank. You can see that we have gone 400 miles on that tank of gas. So that's back to the 400 mile range like we've always had in the past. The distance remaining is at 21 miles. That did reset itself along the way to the correct number. So as of right now, everything looks like it's working as it should. I'm going to fill it up and see how that goes. I am back from filling this up with gas. And as you can see on the receipt, I got 19.95 gallons of gas in it. So I am back to what used to be normal for this. You can see the gas gauge is above the full mark again when it's full. Um, again, to home, I've gone another six miles to get home. I don't know why, but my range is not resetting back like it used to. When I filled it up, it's always gone up to that 394 to 411 miles range. I don't know why it's not reading accurately this time. I'm not worried about that too much. I don't use it anyway. Um, as long as I know my gas gauge is reading correctly, um, then I'm happy. I know too that when I ran this thing out of gas and I filled it up, it took 23 gallons. So even when it's down on E, I know I have another at least two gallons if I absolutely need it. If I get stuck in traffic and I can't get off to an off ramp, I know I've got a couple gallons left to go. Again, I go by um, the trip meter and I know now that the fuel gauge is accurate. Um, I hope this helps anybody else out there that's having issues with your gas gauge. Um, changing the sending unit on this has taken care of it for me. Um, wasn't that bad of a job. Um, I hope and something in here I said helps you troubleshooting yours. And you have a great day and thank you for watching.